Hi everyone, let's see how to use the TI Inspire CX when working with a frequency table. In particular here, we're going to see how to quickly find the mean, median, the mode, the lower quartile, upper quartile, interquartile range, and we'll even finish by drawing a box plot, all of which will be done with our TI Inspire. So let's get started. We'll work through the example we see here in which we're told that a school's results at the IB Higher Level Mathematics exam last year are summarized in the following table. And we can see the frequency table right here. We're then asked to find the mean result, find the median result, state the mode, find the interquartile range, and draw a box plot for these results. Well, the first thing we have to do is enter this frequency table inside our calculator. So let's start with that. On my calculator here, you can see that I'm on the home page. And to enter the frequency table, the first thing I need to do is open up a new spreadsheet. And I do that right here. You can see a sort of spreadsheet icon in the middle here. And so I click on that. I now have a blank spreadsheet in which I need to enter all the data we have in the frequency table. But before entering the numbers, make sure to name the columns in which you're working. Here's what I mean. At the very top of this first column, A, I'll go ahead and name this column grade. So I type grade. At the top of the second column, column B, I now need to name this frequency. But quite an important thing to know with the TI Inspire is that if we try and name this column frequency and type enter, we get an invalid input message. Indeed, we cannot name any columns frequency with the TI Inspire CX. And so if I press OK here, instead of naming it frequency, I typically call it something like freq. And so I type enter. Now that that's done, I copy all the data that I have inside my table into the spreadsheet on my calculator. So let's go ahead. The grades we can get are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And in the next column, I enter the corresponding frequencies. So those are 2, 1, 5, 9, 12, 9, and 7. Done. Now that all of that is done, I place myself in the next column, column C, and I scroll up to the top of the page. Now, the mean, median, lower quartile, upper quartile, interquartile range, and so on, are all part of one variable statistics. And to find all of those in one go on our calculator, here's what we do. We go ahead and click on Menu, followed by the fourth option, Statistics, followed by the first option, Stat Calculations, and here we have a long list of options to choose from, but we choose the very top one, one variable statistics. And so I click on that. The calculator now asks me how many lists we're working with. And in this case, we're only dealing with one frequency table, and so the number of lists is just one. So I click on OK. Now at the very top here, the calculator is asking me to specify which column is the variable. That's what it means here by x1 list. And the variable in this example is the grade obtained at the IB mathematics exam. And so I click on the drop down menu right here, and now I can see the two columns that I named grade and freq. So I select grade. Done. In the next row, I need to enter the frequency list. In other words, I need to tell the calculator which column contains the frequency values. So I click on the drop down menu, like so, and I select the first option here, freq. Done. I now leave all the other rows as they are, and I click on OK. And we're done. All the results we need for one variable statistics are in this column right here. Indeed, we can see that we have the mean. If we needed it, we have the standard deviation. We have the total number of values, the minimum value, the lower quartile, the median, upper quartile, and maximum value. And so going back to my whiteboard, we can now answer all the questions. Remember, the first thing we had to find was the mean result. And I'll just write that here, that's the first thing. We need to find the mean. Scrolling back to the top of the results on my calculator here, we can see that the mean is the value next to this x with the bar on top, and rounding to three significant figures, we see that the mean, x bar, is equal to 4.84. Done. Next, we need to find the median result. So I write a two here, and scrolling through the results on my calculator, I find the median right here. Indeed, the median value for the variable x is 5. So I write median, median, equals to 5. I carry on. The third thing we have to find is the mode. Now, the mode, on the other hand, is not given by our calculator. 
But remember, the mode is the value with the highest or largest frequency inside our table. Looking at all of this, we quickly see that the highest or largest frequency is 12, and consequently the mode is 5. And so for question 3, question 3, we can go ahead and state that the mode, mode is equal to 5. I carry on. The fourth thing we have to find is the interquartile range. And the interquartile range is often simply written I, Q, R, and is equal to the upper quartile, which we write Q3, minus the lower quartile, which is written Q1. And looking at our calculator here, we can see that we have both of those values. Indeed, Q1, or the lower quartile, is 4, and Q3, or the upper quartile, is 6. So the interquartile range is equal to 6 minus 4, in other words, the interquartile range, IQR, equals to 2. Finally, I answer the last question, question 5, in which we need to draw a box plot. Now, to draw a box plot, we need five things. Those being the minimum value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum value. And if I scroll down a tiny bit on my calculator here, we can see that those are the five things on the screen here. Indeed, we have minimum value, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and maximum value. And so using those results, here's how we can quickly draw a box plot. I start by drawing a line segment, something looking like this. There we go. And on the far left hand side, I write 1. That's the minimum value. Now ideally you should use a ruler for the next part and choose a suitable scale. But here I'll do it by I, and I'll move along this line segment until I reach the maximum value, which is 7. So starting from 1, I'll say that 2 is here, 3 would be there, 4 would be there, 5 would be there, 6 would be there, and 7 would be right here. And I'll erase the end of the segment there, like so. And I'll label the maximum value 7. Next, look at my calculator. I can see that the lower quartile, or Q1, is 4. So starting from 1, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. The lower quartile is right here. And that forms the left-hand side of my box, like so. And again, I label that underneath it, 4. Going back to my calculator again, I can see that the upper quartile is 6. And so 6 on our line segment would be right here. And that creates the right-hand side of my box, which I label 6 underneath. Now I close the box, like so, and all I have to add is the median. Again, looking at my calculator, I can see quite clearly that the median is 5. And so I add a line segment inside my box right here, and I label it underneath 5. And I could even shade the box here. And there we go. We now know how to use our TI Inspire CX with frequency tables to find the mean, median, lower and upper quartiles, interquartile range, and for drawing a box plot. And that's it for this tutorial.